Maclay Valley Travel Sri Lanka Tour 2023. We departed Australia from Sydney in February 2023 and arrived in Singapore just in time for our connecting flight to Colombo. After arriving in Sri Lanka, we met our guide and we were transferred to our hotel in Ngombo. A leisurely start to the day to explore the Jetwing Blue Ngombo Hotel and the extensive food selections for breakfast before we commenced our tour of Ngombo, which is located 37 kilometers north of Colombo and is well known as a classic fishing town. Its wide, sandy beaches and lush, tall coconut palms will send any visitor into instant tropical paradise. The highlights of our tour included the many multicolored fishing boats, the fish drying area where the fish are dried in the sun for two days, and the wet market, showcasing many different varieties of fish that had been caught that day. The rest of the day was spent enjoying the scenery and activity on the beach and the magnificent sunset. After breakfast, we set off for Anuradhapura via the Pinawala Elephant Orphanage, which is situated approximately 90 kilometers from Colombo. The orphanage was founded in 1975 by the Sri Lanka Department of Wildlife Conservation. It is aimed at providing care and protection for many of the orphaned baby wild elephants found wandering in the forests of Sri Lanka. Pinawala Elephant Orphanage also places an emphasis on breeding and ongoing research for these gentle giants. We enjoyed lunch at a local restaurant overlooking the elephant bathing place before we continued on to Anuradhapura and checked into the Lake Forest Hotel. On the way, we stopped at a cigarette factory on the side of the road, all completely handmade. Sunrise over the lake was spectacular and the bountiful bird life made you feel like you were close to nature and away from the hustle and bustle of the cities. We visited the Anuradhapura ancient kingdom, which was the first kingdom and capital of Sri Lanka. We spent some time exploring the ancient ruins of this UNESCO World Heritage listed site, including the most renowned relic of the Bodhi tree. It's grown from a branch brought over from India and it was under which Buddha was believed to have attained enlightenment. It was an extremely busy day as many families had traveled to the temples as it was the end of school holidays. We then traveled on to Trincomalee where we checked into the Trinco Blue by Cinnamon Hotel located on the beachfront. In the morning, we enjoyed a tuk-tuk ride up to the entrance of the Koneswaram Hindu Temple. This was also known as the Temple of a Thousand Columns. However, it was destroyed by the Portuguese in the 16th century when they threw all the columns down to the sea below. The temple was later rebuilt sitting atop Swami Rock. Its prime location affords views of the ocean whilst admiring the incredibly detailed carving of the statues. We spotted several monkeys making themselves at home in and around the temple. 
we walked down the road through the army barracks before viewing one of the largest and safest natural harbours in the world. The group discovered we had an aqua aerobics instructor in our midst and after some persuasion he kindly led a fun aqua class in the afternoon. We started the day by watching the sunrise over the beach in Trincomalee before we drove to the Dambula Cave Temple, which is part of the Golden Triangle of Sri Lanka and is encrusted into a magnificently large rock. It sits more than 160 metres above the surrounding land and measures more than 1.5 kilometres around the base. Also known as the Golden Temple, it was listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1991. This ancient complex was initially established in the 3rd century BC and is truly a wonder as it is the largest and best preserved of the cave temples in Sri Lanka. The cave temples are home to numerous religious and cultural paintings and sculptures. To immerse ourselves into the local culture, a traditional lunch was organised, giving us the chance to experience traditional food prepared on an open fire, cooked in terracotta pots and served on coconut leaves. Then we set off for one of Sri Lanka's major attractions, Sigiriya Rock Fortress, where we had the opportunity to make the strenuous climb to the top, 180 metres above the surrounding plain. First we purchased our tickets, then walked through a series of water gardens before commencing the climb through the naturally formed arches of the boulder garden. Traversing up the rock via a series of stone steps and a spiral staircase enclosed in a rusty metal mesh cage, we made it to the mirror wall, definitely not for the faint-hearted. One more section and we reached the lion gate, marked by the giant lion's paws. From here, our guide told us it was only 10 more minutes to the top. <laughs> up, up and up we went. And finally we reached the top where we were rewarded with breathtaking views of the surrounding landscape. The fortress was built by King Caspaya from 477 to 495 AD to protect him from his rivals. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is known as the Fortress in the Sky. We started the day by visiting a rural Buddhist temple where the monk and his two novices took a purist thread and snaked it through all of our hands before chanting holy blessings. Once they had blessed the thread, it was returned to them to cut up into individual pieces and tied onto each of our wrists. As part of the ritual, our group presented the monk and his novices with gifts to thank them for our blessing. Within the temple grounds is a 2,300 year old Bodhi tree grown from a branch from the original Bodhi tree under which we gathered to learn more about Buddhism. Following our blessing, we were treated to a tractor ride to a local lake. Our local driver insisted on sharing the driving along the rural roads, passing a traditional bullock cart and a peacock. Into double canoes, we were paddled around the lake, enjoying the peacefulness and watching the bird life. We proceeded by bus to one of the poorest rural primary schools for a visit that had been arranged by Maclay Valley Travel and the local company, Esna Holidays, as part of their corporate social responsibilities. Kuma, our guide, had organised for a laptop and projector to be purchased and given to the school. In appreciation, some of the children were selected to give speeches, perform dances, and finally have a game of cricket. 
all under the watchful eyes of their proud parents. This was an incredibly humbling experience for all, and there was not a dry eye on the bus when we returned. Very warmly welcome to all at our college fun function. Today I am very happy to tell you giving this world and op opportunities so much. The afternoon was spent exploring the grounds of our beautiful hotel, the Habarana Village by Cinnamon, enjoying views from their lakeside location before another spectacular dining experience at the buffet that catered to all. Day seven starts and we are on the bus again to see some stunning Sri Lankan scenery and then we pass the markets before finally arriving at the Spice Gardens. The Spice Gardens ended up being a two hour tour where the guide explained the health benefits of all the herbs and spices that are grown in his garden and that we Westerners needed to purchase from the gift shop before we left. To enhance the overall benefits of the spices, we were treated to a massage, which may be one of the biggest highlights of our trip. It was one of the few events that everybody was happy to participate in. Back on the bus for more stunning scenery as we arrived in the high country of Kandy, where we stopped for lunch and did some tourist shopping. The ladies were only too pleased to show us around the store and finally activate their credit card machine. Next we visited the Temple of the Tooth Relic, or Dalada Maligawa as it is known to the locals. This sacred temple is located in Kandy and is also home to the palm leaf transcripts. Its history dates back to 1687. The stunning piece of architecture is instantly recognised by its octagonal shape and golden roof. Although we were not able to view the tooth itself, the casket in which it lies is on display. This casket is carried on the back of an elephant one day each year. For over 50 years, Raja the Tusker carried the casket during the ceremonial day. There is now a museum dedicated to Raja's memory. We passed through the audience hall, or Magul Madua, which is where the Candian kings held their court. Later that evening, we also saw a cultural show, which displayed a combination of upcountry and low country dance performances, and some fire twirling and even some fire walking. So if you like this video, what do you do? Give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. See you in the next one. This is a botanical garden, Sydney, Australia. Beautiful.